Hello everyone and welcome to Corpse Party D2 Depths of Despair Nightmare Edition. Now, last time we were here, we were just completed Chapter Zero, where of course Ayumi's um, lose the hard way, but sometimes using a big black book, evil tome of black magic, is not the best way to try and revive your friends, because you tend to lose more than you can ever gain. So, instead of there just being two dead friends, you've got the youngest of the party, and of course Yoshiki, um, she also lost to Toshi, who tried to save her. So remember kids, don't go messing with black magic, especially if you don't know what you're doing. Now of course, that was set in the past, after the events of, um, the first game, Corpse Party, um, after they come back from Heavenly Host Elementary School. Don't let the name fool you. So let's continue. Our chapter is chapter one. <clears throat> chapter one, return to the nightmare. Ayumi returns to the old schoolhouse where the curtain to the nightmare is thrown open once again. In other words, she has to travel back to Heavenly House Elementary School. Oh yay, you get to see all the old ghosties and, and friends. Well, let's begin. Of course we want to do the opening. Let's see question. You, Shishato, stood at her lecture, patiently waiting for her former students to arrive. I'm going to call Miss Yu for this. The timing of the important reunion was sudden, but even so, you had managed to convince some of them to come. Yu was about to speak to a woman who was staring out the window when the classroom door opened. It's been so long since I've been in this room! Yu smiled at Mayu and walked over to greet her. Shizumoto, I didn't expect to see you here. I thought you'd be too busy with work. I miss out on seeing my friends. Not when there's a chance of seeing Shigami here. It's good to see you again, Shizumoto. Why don't you go say hi to Shin? Before you could finish, the door opened again. Mayu hurried over to hug the man that walked into the classroom. I had a feeling I see you here, Mayu. I wasn't going to miss a chance of seeing you again, Chick. How's your acting career been? It's been slow lately. You still haven't been casted for a lead role? Have you? That does it. You'll be the lead in my next show. That really isn't necessary. I insist I'll pay you double whatever you're getting you're making now. And getting. She's very determined. For those who are not aware, Mayu and Shigini, um, she can she does sometimes refer to him as a brother. They are really close. I don't want to spoil too much though. It sounds like a generous offer, Mashie. You should take it. I'll uh, consider it. You turned to look at the woman standing by the window, but a commotion at the door quickly grabbed her attention again. We're getting so many visitors today. I hope you didn't start the party without me. Shinohara! My ran over to hug Seiko, and the two chuckled. When she drew away to look at Seiko's face, Something seemed to miss. What happened to your hair? Oh this! I may or may not have made a bet with the manager regarding sales. The loser had to dye their the hair green for the rest of the month. <laughs> I guess you didn't win the bet. You don't sound too upset about the results. I let her win since she's my boss and all. <laughs> Seiko looked at the nearly empty classroom. So, did I miss anything? Not really, I just got here a few minutes ago. I've been so busy lately, I was worried I wouldn't be able to come. Did everyone forget today was our class reunion? Actually, Shinozaki came here. The door opened as you had begun to speak, and Seiko... Seiko immediately buried her face in the chest of the new arrival. Naomi! <laughs> An 
And of course, I believe more or less that might actually be spelled a little bit wrong. Then again, I haven't spelled Naomi in such a long time. And don't worry, this is completely normal, her reaction. <laughs> Why, hello, Seiko. Seiko. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right or wrong this time again. I haven't said... Psycho, Seiko. Yes, Seiko is right. It's been long, so long since I've seen that radiant face of yours! Yes, everyone, it is completely normal. She does indeed have feelings for Naomi in this way, so please don't feel disturbed or surprised in the slightest if Seiko decides to show her affections in the most unusual of ways. We went to, to dinner together last week. Don't you know how long that feels for me, Naomi? Sick. Mayu and, um, I believe, Mayu and, of course, Mushige snickered quietly as Seiko reluctantly let go of Naomi. Iman peeked inside the still open door and called into the room. I don't know who this is. You, could I... <coughs> I'm sorry. You, could I talk to you for a moment? Or a minute, whatever. Of course, just a moment or whatever. Everybody just say moment and minute. Don't look at me, folks. I am doing this on the spot. Remember, I am redo anything I do. If I mess up on the spot, you get it on the recording. Miss Yu moved towards the door, but not without looking over his shoulder and mentioning one last thing. I'll be back in a minute, everyone. Don't forget to include Shinsaki. She's been looking a bit lonely. As you and whoever the other person is left, Seiko turned around and spotted the woman by the window. Shinazaki, you're here! Naomi, let's go say hi! Alright. Seiko crept towards the woman, looking out the window. When she was in range, she reached and held her hands over the woman's eyes. Hello, Shinazaki! Is that you, Shinohara? That's right! Seiko let go of Ayumi's face and Ayumi turned to face her former classmates. How have you two been? Uh, I've been really busy with work lately. A lot of the people are getting hurt this time of the year. I actually had to move some vacation time to make it today. The life of a nurse is a thankless one, Shinazaki. Which is why Naomi is lucky I'm around, eh? Eh? being a nurse a thankless job. What about you, Ayumi? Did you manage to land a job as an illustrator? Sort of. Most recently I've been commissioned to draw the cover art for the next book by Naihu Sinayoki and you guys will actually find out who these two are later, I promise. Technically, she's supposed to be dead and so is he, so I'm not really sure how this one works. Oh, you mean that creepy book series about the haunted schools? I might have to read the next one now. Uh, Is something wrong, Ayumi? It's nothing. I just feel uncomfortable in this room. Why? This was our second year homeroom. Think of all the memories we had we made here. Some of those memories are happier than others. She's talking about what happened to Satoshi and Kishiromaru. Oh. There was an uncomfortable pause. Anyway, where did you move to after school, Shinazaki? I'd rather talk about anything else except for this depressing topic right now. I've actually just been living with my sister for the past few years. We moved into our own place after I graduated from high school. You're still in town? I haven't seen you anywhere. Don't tell me you're a roclip. Hey, Sickle, why don't you talk with Moshige and Shishimoto for a bit? I want to ask Ayumi something. Not to mention, I can't believe she was just about to call her that out loud. Oh dear, oh dear. Huh? Oh, oh, okay. But don't you go anywhere, Naomi. I'll be right back. 
Despite not understanding the sentention, Seiko obediently went to speak with the others since she always does as Naomi asks. Not to mention, Seiko can't help always being so honest. It's part of her personality. Don't hate her for her, folks. A silence passed between Ayumi and Naomi. Neither seemed to want to be the first to break it. How awkward. I can't even tell anyone what really happened. That's understandable because... I'll just let her try. The news, the week after they died, I feel like they just disappeared and the Moshidas moved away before I could apologize. I know it's hard, Ayumi. I haven't been able to get over it either. Not entirely. How do you keep going? I try to keep my mind off of it by working extra hours. Sometimes I'll skip a day of sleep just in case I have a nightmare. Seiko helps too, but I can't bring myself to tell her why I'm always so down. I wish I could go back and fix things. If I had to differently, they wouldn't have died. Again, not a re- No, I don't- I can't say much right now, actually. Never mind. Before Naomi could respond, the classroom door opened and Miss Yu re-entered the room. We should go talk to the others. Try to smile, okay? I'll try. You sound like my mother. The two women rejoined their friends, trying their best to fake smiles. Yay. Well, it's later than I thought it was. The sun's already setting. It'll be dark soon. You grinned, as if she'd been given a brilliant idea. She walked over a desk and put out a candle. If it's getting dark, maybe we could turn out the lights and tell a few ghost stories by candlelight. Oh, the memories of Corpse Party. Don't you all remember that, you know, that stormy night when they were all telling ghost stories, Miss Yu burst through the door, then all of a sudden all hell breaks loose when they do a charm. Ah, such fond memories that result in people dying. Oh god, here we go again. Oh yes, I've got plenty of scary stories that none of you will believe. Oh Naomi, oh, I've got tons about Naomi. What? Mm -mm. The lights were shut off and the sun set beyond the horizon. Now the only light in the room came from a dim candle. Everyone was sitting around the candle except for Ayumi, which is understandable. Aren't you going to join us, Shinozaki? Um, you aren't scared, are you? No. I thought you liked telling ghost stories, Shinazaki. I used to, then I lost three friends in one night to a ghost story. Ayumi, are you feeling alright? Maybe you should go to the bathroom first. Yeah, I'll be right back. Ayumi left the classroom, closing the door gently behind her. I shouldn't have lied to them. They might get worried when I don't come back from the bathroom. But I can't tell another ghost story now after what happened the last time. Just as Ayumi began to walk down the hall, a girl bumped into her and nearly knocked her over. How rude. Hey! Ayumi squinted to try to see the girl in the dark, but all she could see was the girl's red dress. Uh-oh. Huh? Why do I feel so dizzy? Without warning, Ayumi's knees gave out. She fell to the floor. Her vision blurred, but before she lost her vision, she thought she saw a red letter just out of her reach. Yay! Uh, watch as she freaks out. Wah! What happened? Ayumi pushed herself to her feet and rubbed her eyes before looking around. Wait, th this is that school. No, not again. It's pitch black. No, why? Why is this happening to me again? Karma. I, I have to calm down. I, 
I'll take care of you, Shinazaki. I'm a bit worried about her. I'm alone this time, aren't I? Amy sighed and pulled out her phone to provide some light. I'll just have to look for a way out. I survived this once, I can do it again. I hope. No, of course, I can finally save. Yay! Yes, okay. Marvelous. This, of course, is Heavenly Hugs, the location which all of the nightmares started. Isn't fantastic if an empty collapse and things always change every time they go there? I love Girl Sparks. Okay, so that was actually a pretty long opening, so I'm gonna stop it here. And then we'll continue more of this tomorrow where we actually go and do some of the gameplay. I guess see you next time.